Good morning, class. Social studies. Today we begin uh, chapter two, isn't it? New lesson. So it is sources of history. So I hope you have your books with you. Please open to page seventeen, and I will begin reading. And please follow what I am reading. Okay. I'll be sending you videos also. If you don't understand, I'll be sending you videos. Please make it a point to look at the videos so that you will understand the lesson better. Okay, okay. Now, we'll you start off with the warm up. The stories of the past help us to convict to present and plan for the future. To know about the past, we need to study objects, inscriptions, and buildings. Now, can you name India's first ancient civilization? I think we did it in the first chapter. Well, if you don't know, I'll let you know. The Vedic civilization is the earliest civilization in the history of ancient India. Okay, it is the Vedic civilization. So now we begin the lesson. Let's explore. Everything that we know about the past, like the names of the kings, their kingdoms, their way of life, the wars they fought, is based on history. But how do we know about them? We know about them through various proofs or evidences known as sources of history. Let's take a look. at the different sources of history archaeological sources historians use buildings objects carvings and other remains of the past to get an idea about our history in the absence of written records these sources are known as archaeological sources now artifacts and monuments these are man made material remains of the past societies which tell us about their activities tools weapons pottery sculptures etc our artifacts monuments are large structures like buildings or bridges <clears throat> that are historical importance for example the taj mahal and great wall of china okay monuments like taj mahal and great wall of china now coins you must have seen old coins also isn't it if you ask your parents they might show you if they have with them a few old coins Coins are very important source of history. They can help us determine important features of the past, like their economic condition of the people, the extent of a kingdom, the period during which a king ruled, and other symbols which tell us about the occupation of people. Inscriptions now. If you see in your book, there are pictures over there of coins, inscriptions. You will understand what they are. Okay. Inscriptions are drawings and writings found on pillars, walls, caves, stones, or copper tablets. They are important historical evidences that give great insights into the past. they contain stories of how kingdoms were ruled and battles were fought king ashoka ruled some 2300 years ago his inscriptions are found on walls pillars and stones at many sites in india now the literary sources the main source of historical knowledge are written texts literary sources are written record found in the form of biographies travel logs and religious books 
which provide us with accurate accounts of the past. Literature Religious and secular texts give us detailed description of our past. They tell us about religious beliefs, social systems, customs and culture. The Ramayana, the Mahabharata and the Manus Manusmriti are some of the sources of history. Biographies now. The autobiography of the Mughal Emperor Babur titled Babur Nama was the first autobiography in Islamic literature written in Turki language. It paints a clear picture of life in Central Asia and India. Now travelogues. Various accounts of foreigners who travel to India provide ample information about our past. Hyun Sang from China and Ibn Battuda from Morocco have written about ancient and medieval India. These books make a very interesting read. Oral sources now. There is a fact file also here. Stories, songs, poems and folk tales narrated within the families or communities are oral sources of history. And the first Harappan sites were discovered by archaeologists Dr. D. R. Sani and Dr. R. D. Banerjee during 1920 and 21. The latest site that has been discovered is Rakhi Garhi in Haryana. Now we'll move on to oral sources. The stories, poems and songs that were passed down by word of mouth from one generation to another are called oral sources. Old folk tales, stories with morals, poems and songs about the heroes and battles they won all tell us something about the past. Parents or grandparents tell these stories to children while growing up so that the knowledge is transferred. Now need to preserve sources. Now we need to preserve these sources. To understand today better, we need to know about our history. We need to preserve the sources for the following reasons. Now why do we need to preserve the sources? Now here are a few uh, needs, okay, why we need to preserve the sources, okay. Number one, historical facts and artifacts help us to know why we follow certain customs and traditions. Number two, some artifacts have monetary value which makes it important to save them. Number three, they give us an idea of our rich cultural heritage and prestige. Number four, the, the monuments are a link to the past. They should be saved and preserved. Respecting, preserving and understanding the sources of history is one of the ways to show our respect for our ancestors and our history. We must never deface a monument by writing, painting or carving on it. In fact, we should help in keeping the surroundings absolutely clean. Now, historians and archaeologists. Now that you know about the sources of history and the need to preserve them, do you know who preserves these for us? We can understand history better with the help of historians and archaeologists. Now we will learn about the historians. Historians study written records of history. It is here they find evidence to back 
up their understanding of any event or time period of the past. Historians gather information from various written documents. They are then able to answer the questions of what happened, who was involved, why it happened, etc. Number three, some historians work as archivists, helping to the helping in the collection and preservation of important historical documents or buildings, for example, intact in India. Now, archaeologists. An archaeologist's work begins with finding a site to study. Some archaeological sites are visible on the surface areas, whereas some are buried deep beneath the ground. After finding a site, an archaeologist digs slowly and carefully. This work is called excavation or a dig. Archaeologists uncover buildings, tools, weapons, art and pieces of pottery that people made. These items are called artifacts. Now, what are the archaeological sources? The buildings, objects, carvings, etc. are examples of archaeological sources. Number two, three types of such sources are artifacts, monuments, coins and inscriptions. Now literary sources, what are literary sources? Literary Literature such as texts, autobiographies like Babur Nama, travelogues written by Hyun Sang provide accurate accounts of the past. Oral sources now, stories, poems, songs that were passed on from one generation to another are called oral sources. Number four, need to preservation preserve sources. Artifacts have monetary value. They provide rich insights into the cultural heritage. So, uh, I'll be sending you 20 spellings children. Please learn these spellings. Okay? So, that's all for today. Bye-bye.